It's free! It's free! to get something free. When I was a boy, I sometimes used all my allowance to buy postcards. And then I'd go through magazines and find things I could send for that were free. But you know something? It's fun to get free candy and things like that. But there's something much more important, the most important thing in all the world, and it's free. What's the most important thing in the world that's free? To really be a Christian. That's right. Not one of us. Nobody in all the world deserves to be a Christian. To have our sins forgiven, to have the Lord Jesus fill our lives with happiness, and to know we're going to heaven someday, we don't deserve this. But it's ours, free. The Bible calls this salvation. What's salvation, Mr. Messenger? That's what he's talking about. Salvation is when you let Jesus into your heart so he can forgive your sins and make you happy. That's right. I'm still not sure I understand. Do you like to hike in the woods? Sure. And have your parents ever warned you to be careful so you don't get lost? Okay, let's imagine you're out hiking in the woods. You get a little careless and go deep into the trees, away from any trails. You're sure you can take care of yourself, but you get lost. It's no fun being lost. It can be very dangerous. Suppose when you're lost in the woods, you find a box. It's full of books. Books on science, history, arithmetic, all kinds of books. You could read all those books, learn everything in them, but that wouldn't help you find your way out of the woods. And that's how it is with lots of people in this world. They learn many things, but they just never take the time to learn the most important thing, how to become a Christian. Suppose you were to find a lot of money in this box, hundreds of dollars perhaps. What good would that do you so long as you were lost? You couldn't buy any food. You couldn't buy a ticket which would take you out of the woods. You'd be just like people in the world today. They work and work to make money. Money becomes the most important thing in life to them. They think so much about money, they never take time to think about God's free gift of salvation. It's especially bad to be lost in the woods at night. The Bible tells us this world is full of darkness, the darkness of sin. Jesus said, if you follow me, you won't be stumbling through the darkness, for a living light will flood your path. God is light, the Bible tells us, and in him is no darkness at all. Go to that light and you won't be lost anymore. Becoming a Christian means that you turn from the darkness of sin and go to the light which God has given us, the light we find in the Bible. But many people won't come to God's light. They try to live their own way. They go all through life lost. Don't turn your backs on God's light, kids. The Apostle Paul said to one of his young friends, When you were a small child, you were taught the Holy Scriptures, and it is these that make you wise to accept God's salvation by trusting in Christ Jesus. I still don't quite understand how you become a Christian, Mr. Messenger. Okay, let's think of it this way. Suppose you were out there in the water, drowning. Then you saw me coming in my boat. What would you do? I would call out for you to save me. But what if I looked down at you and said, Oh, you're drowning. 
I'm sorry. What a terrible thing. Dear me, it's getting late. I must hurry. I don't have time to save you now, but I'll be back this way in an hour. If you're still drowning then, I'll pull you into my boat and save you. Is that what I would do? No, you would pull me into your boat and save me. Of course I would. I would save your life just as fast as I could. That's the way it is when you become a Christian. You're like a person drowning. You can't save yourself. But the Bible tells us anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I understand. Isn't it kind of like when you're sick? The doctor gives you some medicine. If you take the medicine, the germs in your body will die. You will get well again. But you've got to take the medicine. Sin is a terrible thing. All of us have sin in our hearts. The Bible tells us all have sinned, everybody. But when we open our hearts to the Lord Jesus, when we become Christians, then something wonderful happens. God makes us his children. Becoming a Christian not only sets you free from sin, becoming a Christian is the only way to really have a happy life. So do you think you really understand what it means to be a Christian? Everyone is lost without Jesus. It's like being lost in the woods at night. But the Bible is God's light. The Bible tells us how we can be saved from our sins. You just told Jesus you're lost. You can't save yourself. You ask him to save you and he does. Anybody who really wants to can become a Christian. All you have to do is open your heart to the Lord Jesus. I'm sure glad I'm a Christian. So am I. Are you a Christian? If you aren't, you can be. Always remember what the Bible says, kids. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. My name is Steve Seacrest. I'm the missionary director of Lakeland Child Evangelism Ministries. And I just want to share something with you today. Uh, I know with this coronavirus scare that we've got, a lot of people are wondering, what does this mean? What's going to happen to me? Uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. And uh, the thing is, we can have something that we know for sure if we look to God and his word. And there's some, there's some good truths in God's word about things that are going to happen, but things that did happen. You know, we just came through the Easter season when we celebrate the crucifixion on Good Friday and the resurrection on Easter Sunday of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, because of that, we can have hope in, in the midst of despair. And uh, I just want to share something that we share in the Good News Caboose all the time with boys and girls, moms and dads, and grandpas and grandmas, and a lot of people uh, have never really heard this story, but it's, it's a very simple one. I'm going to use a, a book without words. And this gold page represents where God lives. It represents heaven. And, you know, God wants us all to be there with him. He, wants, he doesn't want anyone to miss it. And the reason that I say that is because there's a problem for us that we all have. And that problem starts here and this represents sin now sin is a problem that we all have it uh it's there because god says it's there adam and eve sinned the original sin and we all from that point on are sinners we're born that way with a sin nature that's in rebellion against god and in uh, in Romans 3.23, he says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, you might think, well, I'm not, I'm not that bad. I haven't done that many bad things. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much or how little. What matters is that we're all sinners because God says so. And that sin does some, some bad things. It separates us from God. God is holy and perfect. And here we are sinners. God won't tolerate sin in heaven, uh, but he had, he had a plan. He, he loved us so much that he wanted to do something for us. Uh, but let's look at the sin problem first of all. 
You know, that sin not only separates us from God, it gets us into a lot of trouble. And it causes us to do things we shouldn't do and say things we shouldn't say and act ways we shouldn't act. And those things are all things that will get us into trouble. And I think you probably all could say, well, I've been in at least a little bit of trouble. Yeah, maybe some of you have been in a lot of trouble. Uh, it doesn't really matter because we're all in the same boat. Uh, and, you know, the thing about sin is there's a consequence to sin. And Romans 6.23 tells us about a pretty serious consequence. It says the wages of sin is death. Now, if for the older ones of you who've had jobs, you know what wages are. Uh, for you children, you may not know, but wages are what your parents earn at their job, and that's what keeps you going. And right now, it's a difficult time because wages are different and maybe not non-existent. But the wages of sin is death. Now that death that is that verse is talking about is not a physical death. Uh, it's a spiritual death. It's an eternal separation from God in a terrible place called hell. That's what we deserve. It's what we all deserve. But I'm just thankful that God didn't stop there because in that verse, he finished it by saying, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, God had a plan because he knew we were in trouble. And if he didn't do something, we were in a bad way. There was nothing we could do to, to save ourselves. So he, his plan included this page right here, which represents what Jesus Christ did for us. And the thing that we celebrate on Easter Sunday, uh, the fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth, a perfect man. He was God in the flesh. And he took on that, that body to, to become like we were so he could walk this earth like we do and yet never sinned. He was completely without sin, the only person ever that way. But it was all because of God's love for us. John 3.16 tells us that. It says, for God so loved the world, that's us, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That means we can live with God forever in heaven. And the only thing we can do, we can't be good enough to get there. We can't do enough good things. We can't buy our way there. No, all that is meaningless. The only thing we can do is believe that Jesus Christ has already done everything necessary. He, he came to this earth. He lived a sinless life. He, he went to the cross. He died on that cross and shed his blood, which is what the red represents, the blood that Jesus shed. And when he was, before he died on that cross, he said, it is finished. And you know, that meant that God's plan of salvation for you and I was finished by Jesus Christ on that cross. And because of that, God could now say to us, here's a free gift for you. You can't earn it or deserve it or be good enough for it. All you can do is receive it because Jesus has already paid for it. It's already paid. All we have to do is accept it. And when we ask Jesus to come into our heart and forgive us of our sins, here's what he does. He takes that heart and life that was all dark and full of sin and go in the wrong direction. And he cleans us all up. Uh, the latter part of uh, 1 John 1, 7 says that Jesus' blood cleanses us or cleans us up from all of our sins so that now when God sees us, he doesn't see us with that sin problem that we had initially. He sees us as clean and pure, not because of how good we are. It has nothing to do with how good we are. It's all because of what Jesus Christ did for us. And we're now clothed in his righteousness not ours we don't have any it's in his righteousness so god can see us as pure and perfect we're still not perfect here on this earth but we know someday we will be and then in john 1 12 is another great verse it says but as many as received him that's jesus to them he gave the right or the ability to become a child of god and as a child of god makes all the difference in where we spend eternity because you see, we're going to spend eternity in heaven with God and with our Savior, Jesus Christ. But you know, there's only one way we get to heaven. You know, if, if a lot of times if I ask kids, oh, how do you get to heaven? Well, you got to be good. Well, how good would you have to be to, to get to heaven that way? You'd have to be perfect. And we can't be. We're not. We can't be. And we never will be until we get to heaven. But you know what? Because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross... He died in our place. He died there in my place and in your place. And he did that because of his great love for us. And when we receive him as our savior, he promises us that we're gonna be in heaven with him someday. And then the green tells us what he wants us to do right now. You know, he wants us to grow. He doesn't want us just to accept him and then 
stagnate. He wants us to grow. And the things that we can do that will help us grow would be read the Bible and pray and go to church in Sunday school and tell others about him. But you know, none of us can grow until we start. And so I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes, and I'm going to pray a simple prayer. But if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you'd like to do that right now, you can do it just by... The prayer isn't what saves you. It's your heart attitude and receiving Jesus Christ and trusting him and trusting God for what he says. The prayer will give you a way of telling God what you want to do, that you want to receive Jesus right now as your Savior. So let's pray. If you've never trusted Christ, just pray along with me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done wrong things, but I believe you died on the cross to pay for my sins. Right now, I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins and save me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you just now prayed that prayer, I'd really like to send you some helps uh, on our YouTube page and also our uh, Facebook page. There's an address. It's uh, Lakeland Child Evangelism Ministries, LCEM, Post Office Box 612, Winona Lake, Indiana, 46590. If you send your name, age, and address, we would be glad to enroll you in the Mailbox Club and send you some great Bible lessons that would help you grow in your walk with the Lord. We all need to grow. We all need to be in God's word. We all need to be doing the things that will please him. We've lived a long time pleasing ourselves, which has got us into nothing but trouble. We need to live now and please him. Thank you for paying attention to this. And uh, I hope you'll trust Jesus as your savior.